Welcome to Despirituality. We've got a good one for you today. The parable of the wedding banquet, or as the New Living says, the parable of the great feast. Today we have Martin Oji. He's with us. He has uh, constructed and written uh, uh, studies for us in the parable of the wedding banquet. And uh, he's joined with by Brian Nita. You may have heard us on a previous podcast. And we're going to get started. In Luke 14, 15, hearing this, a man sitting at the table with Jesus exclaimed, what a blessing it will be to attend a banquet in the kingdom of God. Jesus replied with this story. A man prepared a great feast and sent out many invitations. When the banquet was ready, he sent a servant to tell the guests, come, the banquet is ready. But they all began making excuses. One said, uh, I just bought a field and must inspect it. Please excuse me. Another said, I've just bought five pairs of oxen and I want to try them out. Please excuse me. Another said, I just got married, so I can't come. The servant returned and told his master what they had said. His master was furious and said, go quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and invite the poor, the crippled, the blind and the lame. After the servant had done this, he reported, there's still room for more. So his master said, go out into the country lanes and behind the hedges and urge anyone you find to come so that the house will be full. For none of those I first invited will get even the smallest taste of my banquet. The parable of the wedding banquet, the parable of the great feast, when opportunity calls is the devotional title. Martin Oji, tell us what we can get out of this great parable by Jesus. You know, I, I got a number of things from this parable, but you know, one of the first things that, that stood out to me is when it comes to God and spirituality, people can oftentimes think it's boring. Ah. When I think of a feast, I think of I think of a phenomenal time. Yes. I think of a great time. I mm -hmm. think of I don't want to stop feasting. <laughs> and <laughs> like God actually invites us, invites everyone and wants us to actually have a great time getting to know him and having a great time uh, with, with everyone else that is at his feast. Uh -huh. So it, it's a lot different than what I thought about growing up because I thought religion was don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. And that just didn't inspire me as a younger person. Yeah, yeah. well, what, so, do, they what do they serve at the feast? That's what I want to know. You got me into the feast. What, what, what do oh, they serve? Man. Oxtail. <laughs> you got some Ooh. good oxtail. You got all kinds of... Uh, international okay. food. Okay, you lost me with the <laughs> oxtail. I'm gone now. I'm gone oh. now. In the kingdom of God, one of the things that's exciting uh, that I think is 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 that that uh, that that served up is uh, is great relationships. I think another thing that served up is hope in pessimistic times, and we're living in pessimistic times. Maybe we can call right. that oxtail. Uh, one of the things <laughs> that served up is forgiveness. I think the kingdom of God, that there's forgiveness and that's God's kingdom is based on that a lot, uh, hope. And we're living in some uh, non-hopeful times. And so it seems to me that God is, or Jesus is drawing the, I'm, I think this is what you're saying. Jesus is drawing the analogy that you have greatly underestimated what uh, God's kingdom is about because the Jews, they were following a bunch of rules, sacrifices, you know, I won't get into all of it because a lot of our listeners are not going to be like into wanting to get into the deep theology of all the sacrifices of Leviticus and Numbers. But uh, I think he's saying th that that's not what the goal was. The goal was never to build a nation that's going to fight. The goal was never to build a nation that's going to have all these rules. The goal was to build a kingdom of forgiveness, a kingdom of love, a kingdom of hope, a kingdom of encouragement, a kingdom of internal strength that comes from God, a kingdom of inspiration, a kingdom of light that makes the world a better place. And he's saying, when well, he invited all these people in, why do you think they made excuses? Because if this is what God is offering, you're talking about a grand feast. Why would people make excuses and say, uh, I got other stuff I got to do? You know, I believe entitlement is a big deal. Mm -hmm. And the more entitled we are, we end up thinking that God is trying to take away things from us. Uh -huh. Because we have our own agenda, our own thoughts, our own plans. So we think we know what's best. And then we put aside what God actually wants. And I also think, uh, a, a dangerous thing that can go with entitlement is fear. When I'm a, when I combine fear and entitlement, I just completely miss out on what God is actually trying to do. 
because I get so consumed with me, my fears and what I want to get done. Well, so I, I believe that's why they made all these excuses. Well, when I'm looking at the text, um, it's you know it says they were invited, of course, but it says they all began making excuses. And so I, I'd like to drill down on that a little bit because it seems like excuses are the fundamental basis of the story, the making of excuses. And I understand you're talking about the the motive for the excuses is yes. I've got my own plans. But why do you think Jesus makes such a big deal out of excuses? What what's he what's he going for there? You know, I think when Jesus emphasizes excuses, I, I think it gives it kind of pulls everybody in because everybody gets invited, but everybody has a reason. I, you know, in, in the parable, one says, I just got married. One says, I just bought a, a, a just box and oxtail. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And if you think about it, none of these excuses are actually, you can get married and still come to a feast. Yeah. You can buy, typically before you buy something, you check it out first yeah. before buying it. So unless you have Amazon. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But they yeah, didn't have Amazon true. back then. No Amazon but back then. But if you then. have Amazon though, you check you check the comments, right? So you Absolutely. do check it out before you buy it. Yeah, you yeah, do. yeah. You check comments and if somebody's down there going, I bought that, I bought these shoes and they fell apart in the first day, you're like, let's not buy those. And these people want us to believe that they're outside waiting for the delivery of the Amazon box without having ever checked out a read whether it works or whether it lasts. So Okay, that's good. I like that. What do you think an excuse is? You know, an excuse gives us, when I make excuses, it, it stops me from- I've never heard of having... you making excuses in my entire life, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm sorry for lying to you, Russ. <laughs> sorry for, for tricking you. You know, I make excuses. It's, re it's usually masking my real motive or my real desire. Oh, okay. So when I make excuses, I'm not being honest about what's really going on. Okay. Brian, I see that head of yours moving there, man. You must be thinking some thoughts. What you got on your mind there? <laughs> I, I was thinking of uh, value. Like we make excuses because we don't want to be honest about what we really value. Like to me, they're all making excuses because they didn't really value the relation with God that much. I, I think about in my own marriage and conversations Rose and I have and when I make excuses for why I didn't get something done or why I got home late or why I was distracted by my phone in a conversation, right? And and really the, the what I don't want to be honest with myself about is that, oh man, I don't value our time as much as I really should. Yeah. And and so that that's what I was thinking about in my well, own that's head. That's really it was, cool. What, what do you think are some, I mean, I, I can think about my own life, but I, I want to let you guys have a chance to share what do you think are some of the excuses people make about not having opportunities or excuses they make about taking advantage of the opportunity uh, to have a great relationship with God? In other words, you, from your writing and your work, Martin, a lot of your work is about God goes through great lengths to give us an opportunity to know him. And that passage tells us how hard he works to get us into relationship with him. And that when we reject him, it isn't like he says, let me go punish you. Like these people go, hey, I got excuses. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. He doesn't spend time being mad at the people who make excuses. He, God just moves on and says, there are a lot of other people who would wanna have this. What yeah. do you think are some of the excuses we can tell ourselves about why we don't seek God, why we don't study the Bible, why we don't pray, why we don't sit down and let someone help us know God. Like, what are some of the excuses? And I love what you said, that the excuses mask what's really going on. So I know in my life, I can tell you, I suppressed a lot of emotion. I had a lot of feelings and a lot of thoughts, but I kept them all inside. And I stayed away from God in part because I, as I began to, I didn't know anything about God, so I didn't go to church. But when I started to learn a bit more, it made me nervous because I was like, oh, I'm going to have to talk about all these things that are in my heart, in my mind, what's confusing me, what my hurts are. 
the, the, where I've lost direction, that I'm not as confident on the inside as I act on the outside. And so I would make excuses about, I'm not sure I believe this. I'm not sure I want to do this. I'm not sure I believe you need to read the Bible. I'm not sure I believe you need to go to church. But a lot of that was to keep away from having to talk about, like you just said, Martin, what was really going on inside of me. What do you think are some of the excuses that we make? Or maybe you can just talk a little bit more about why we don't take advantage of these opportunities to know God. You know, a lot of times, even when I think back when I was younger in high school, I would tell myself, I don't have time. Now, I had a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot of time. Yeah. But I would say, I don't have time. Yeah. Other times, one excuse was, I just can't. You know, I, I can't do it. Yeah. Uh, I, I, you know, God is inviting me, but you know what? I don't know. I, I don't have what it takes. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Other times, I would be like, you know, I don't know how. Okay. Even though the Bible makes things very clear, yeah. I'm like, I don't know how. Yeah. All of a sudden, I, f I forget how to read the Bible. Yeah. I can't read English anymore. Yeah. I can't see anymore. I just don't know how. Yeah. These yeah. are all excuses <laughs> that, like I said earlier, masking, like Brian said, what I actually really valued. And yeah. I valued other things. And so I just made a bunch of excuses. So Brian, I'll, I'll pick up on that with you. So in a way, the parable of the wedding banquet or the great feast or the great banquet is a parable about Jesus helping us face what we really value. Mm -hmm. And it's a parable to make us sit down and say, do I value God enough to say, God didn't say, as you pointed out earlier, God didn't say you can't be married. He just said, come to the feast. God right. didn't say you can't have oxen or can't even buy oxen. He just said, come to the feast. And, and God didn't, I, I'm forgetting the other one there. What was the other one? I just blanked on it. Was it very, uh, very field. Much... I just bought a yeah. field. God yeah. didn't say you can't own land. He said, just come to the feast. And you guys have talked about before how a lot of times we see God is saying no. Well, he didn't say no to any of these people. These people said no to him. In fact, you could argue that God blessed the man to be able to afford the oxen. He, mm. or I don't know if it was a man or a woman. I, I'm not, a, yeah, I guess he, um, God blessed the person to be able to buy out a Ford field. God blessed the person to be able to be married. And isn't it interesting that sometimes we can pray for things and ask God for things. And then the moment he gives us something, we don't want the relationship anymore. And it seems to me that these people had received blessings, but instead of saying, hey, I've received these blessings, these good things have happened in my life. Let me go to the one who has blessed me. Instead of doing that, they went, no, I did this and I'm satisfied and I'm happy. And, and interestingly enough, we often end up in circumstances that are good and we feel great until the circumstances go bad. So if this married couple all of a sudden started having mm. married problems, they'd probably go, hey, can we get a ticket to that banquet? We'd like <laughs> yeah. to go to that banquet right, now. Right. You know, if the field, if the field got taken by the enemy, the guy with the field would be like, hey, can we, can we, can we, can we go to that banquet? I want, I want to go to that banquet and get, get, get a little piece of it. And if the oxen ran the guy over and crushed him, <laughs> you know, and he crawled to that banquet going, can I get a little help? As long as our circumstances are okay, it seems like we don't see or value God. And that one of the things Jesus is trying to say is, you better be careful because God is going to find the people who want a relationship with him. Mm -hmm. And if you yeah. reject him, God's not going to sit there and fight you. He's just going to move on to the people who really want the relationship. But the good news is, at the end of the parable, it says, there's always more room. So mm. if you decide to change your mind, you can change your mind, but in order to have a relationship with God, you have to change your mind. He's not going to come circle back around and go, hey, let me knock on your door. I know you said you were married, but you know, there's a window of opportunity to know God mm. and we should take advantage mm. of it, it seems to me. And Jesus says, if you don't, it's not like God is going to turn you away forever, but he's definitely going to move on to the people who really want the relationship because his goal is to give us the opportunity to know him. And if you don't value him, you better go to work on that. And I think the beauty in my life was I had people come to me, even when I made excuses and befriend me and help me see my need for God. And we shouldn't fight friends who want to help us with that. And sometimes we run away from it. A good reason to sit down with someone and have a Bible study is because they can help you overcome 
the fears help you overcome the blind spots that make us not see our need for God. So Brian, when you're hearing me talk about all that, how would you encourage people to overcome their excuses or how did you overcome some excuses? We'll close out with that from you and that from Martin, and we'll be able to end our podcast and send our friends that are listening and and and, and help us out so much, send them on to the despirituality.com website where they can get the study uh, that Martin put together and they can get a scaled down study that they can share with friends uh, as well as be able to listen to more podcasts. Go ahead, Brian. I was going to say, you know, I, I made my own excuses, but the reality is, is on the inside of me that there was so much uh, guilt, shame, fear mm. um, that I didn't want to be known. Cause I go, man, if these things are known about me, then gosh, people are going to change their view of me. That's excellent. Right? And, and it was having friends like you talked about that helped you to fight through the excuses who showed me an example and had open lives themselves and go, wow, you could be completely open and you could be okay with this. That's right? beautiful. That's fantastic. And so it was really the examples of the people around me that really helped me out that showed me uh, uh, how to overcome the excuses to build a relationship with him. That's awesome. Martin, let's give you the last word on your great parable. Well, I guess the parable belongs to Jesus, but you wrote a study yep. <laughs> on the great parable of the, the, the great feast. What do you want to leave people with as they go out uh, and, 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 and continue the journey to know God? You know, uh, one of the things that really stood out to me from this parable is the fact that even when people rejected, uh, when they made excuses and mm -hmm. rejected, you know, God, the father, uh, well, it wasn't referred to the father here in this parable, but when it rejected God, yeah. he didn't sit down crying, whining, just giving up. I just love that God's like, hey, he felt something, but then he moved on to give other people the opportunity. Yeah, And I just love the fact that God gives us so many opportunities. And for me, that helped me because like Brian was talking about, I had so many things I was guilty about, ashamed about, afraid about. But when I had friends teach me that I could be honest, that that made me super grateful wow. for God, for friends. That gratitude helped me want to give other people a chance, helped me want to stop making excuses, helped me want to begin changing my value system because my value system was very much everything about me, what made me look good, feel good, mm -hmm. me, me, me. That was all my value system. When I saw people teach me about God and show me that I could be honest, I could be free, that was incredibly inspiring. And I'm like, you know what? I need to change my value system, actually live my life to help other people. So gratitude was, was huge in helping change my value system and helping me understand, you know, God's love for me, but also, and me living life, inspiring other people and, and helping other people. So. That, that was very helpful for the me. The parable of the great banquet or the great feast or the wedding banquet. What an awesome parable. Thank you, Martin, for your work. Thanks for joining us today, Brian and Martin. And for all you listening, we appreciate you listening. Don't forget, give us five stars, would you, in the ratings and, and make sure you give us five stars if you like the podcast. If you don't like the podcast, as I always say, still give us five stars so we can keep churning away and getting this out to people who really get encouraged by just getting a little bit of vision of what the Bible can do for our lives. The Parable Series. You can find more on DeepSpirituality.com. You can find studies. You can find more podcasts. Uh, and you can find a bunch of other content over there that'll help you with your faith, help you be inspired, and help you inspire others. This is DeepSpirituality. Keep listening to us. There'll be more parables to follow. And I've got some guest hosts coming up. Uh, Mike Query is going to guest host. And uh, Amy Query is going to guest host with some spectacular parables to come. Thanks a lot for listening. DeepSpirituality, and we're out.